Hello everyone, my name is Crista Lojeda and this is my midterm project on the country Peru. So to start off, I decided to include a introduction piece um, which includes the specific location of Peru. And as you can see, it's bordering, um, it's bordered by Ecuador, Colombia, Brazil, and um, Chile. Chile and Bolivia. Um, the total area of the country amounts to 1,285,220 kilometers squared. And the population is roughly around 33.72 million people, which is a lot of people, if you ask me. Um, so going into geography, I decided to include the three terrains that make up this beautiful country. And that includes La Costa, La Sierra, and La Selva. Um, La Costa runs from Ecuador to Chile, and um, it includes one most it includes most popular cities along the coast, such as Lima, Trujillo, and um, Chiclayo. It is home to the Nazca Lines, which is a collection of very large hiero or geoglyphs that have been present since 2650 AD. La Sierra is home to the Andes Mountain Range, which is the highest peak in Peru, standing at around 22,205 feet. Um, it also holds the Colca Canyon, which is twice as deep as the Grand Canyon. And that's like the most interesting fact that I um, summed up for La Sierra. La Selva, it covers a little over 60% of the land in Peru, and it holds the Amazon River, which is the largest river in the world. And it is known as uh, Marañón Marano, by the people of Peru. Um, it is also known for the various healing properties within the environment, which involves the plants and herbs supplied by the forest. So the um, indigenous communities within um, La Selva utilize those properties of the environment. Going into the history of Peru, I decided to include a few fun facts here. So the Inca Empire, which we've all learned about previously, um, ruled from the years 19 or 1438 to 1533. And that was the largest empire in pre-Columbian America. In 1821, um, that was the year they declared their independence from Spain. And General Jose de San Martin was Peru's first leader. Um, there's also a couple other facts there. So in terms of culture, I decided to include, the, include these facts, which are that the um, Quechua and Aymara are the two main native groups who both speak their native languages along with Spanish. Um, excuse me. In the Andes, people dress according to their region or group. So the indigenous women wear various colors and um, woven pieces, as you can see here, and it's gorgeous. Um, but yeah, that's a huge aspect of Peruvian culture. Um, mostly indigenous women dress like this on a daily and all other um, Peruvians decide to dress like this on special occasions. So Peruvians are also extremely courteous people and they value politeness and respect. I learned that if you were to walk into like any convenience store and a Peruvian greets you saying like, um, buenos dias, like good morning, good afternoon, whatever. Um, and you don't respond and just immediately ask them like what you're looking for. They won't really talk to you unless you respond in the same um, courteous manner. And also something that I really loved that I learned about Peruvians is that they never show up on time. They actually consider showing up on time rude, which is awesome. Like I would fit in so well over there. And Peruvians are not punctual, punctual by any means. In terms of cuisine, I decided to include two dishes that I found the most interesting. The first one being um, 
this dish called um, Juanes, which is a dish that consists of chicken, rice, chicken and rice rolled into banana leaves. So as you can see right here, that's that dish. And there seems to be some boiled eggs in there. So I'm assuming they just add whatever else they enjoy. The second dish was a very interesting one, and it is called suri. Suri is a dish that consists of palm weevil grub, which I didn't know what that was um, right off the bat. But after doing some research, I found out that palm weevil grub is the larvae of a palm weevil, which is an insect. <laughs> That's what it looks like. Um, also, but it was the first place in the world to grow potatoes, which was so cool to learn um thanks to the inca empire and the spanish and europeans influenced the culinary scene in peru by introducing chicken pork lamb beans carrots barley and even wheat and the african cultures also had a great influence due to excuse me due to the um enslavement of um of african people back then they introduced various spices, bananas, pumpkins, and even sugar cane to their culture. So for festivals, um, something that I have always known, but not many people probably do, is that Peruvians are huge celebration people. Like they love festivals, they love celebration, they're very upbeat, lively people. So um, I learned that they're I found a statistic that said that there was roughly around 3,500 festivals per year in Peru, which seems excessive. But if you know Peruvians at all, you know that that number is probably a little bit low. Um, I did, however, find an article that stated that there was at least one um, festival per month. So any time of year that you decide to go, there's always going to be something really fun to attend to. Um Something that I thought was really interesting from this slide was that in January, there's a festival called Trujillo uh, Mariners Festival, which is a celebration held in Trujillo. And that's a coastal city in northern Peru. And this is a tradition that stems from the couples dance um, and it utilizes handkerchiefs. So that's really cool. Um, so for tourism, obviously, just like most people, you may want to travel the world and see like all these crazy destinations. Well, Peru is an amazing place to travel to because they have cities such as um, Lima and Cusco and uh, Machu Picchu, which hold amazing sights to see. And um, for example, in Machu Picchu, it consists of the Salgante the Huayna, Pichu, um, and the Sun Gate. Um, it is also best known for trekking and it is one of the newest seven wonders of the world, which reaches at a height of 7,972 feet. So that's the first image right here with the little llama. <laughs> and, oh, sorry. And um, in Lima, they're best known for the Museo Larco art and colonial architecture. And it is, holds a third of Peru's population. So that's very good to know if you would like to visit a city that's well populated and has like amazing nightlife possibly. I think Lima would be a really good place to visit. Um, Cusco holds the Incan ruins and was founded by the first Inca, which was uh, Manco, um, Manco Pac, <laughs> sorry, I always get very tongue tied with that name. Um, the city was the center of the Incan em Empire, and the city also holds the historical site of the um, Coricancha, which is also known as the Courtyard of the Sun. So wildlife. There's obviously going to be tons and tons and tons of wildlife in Peru, some of which being the Peruvian dog, the Andean condor, which is once believed to be the only animal capable of communicating with the gods and the stars, which is so cool. And um, it's one of the largest birds in the world at a height of one meter and a wingspan of 3.80 meters. Um, there's also jaguars and Humboldt penguins, which you wouldn't expect there to be penguins there, but there are. Um, also the Amazon river dolphin, which is gorgeous as you can see right over here 
Um, there's also llamas and alpacas. If you, I don't know about you, but like anytime I think of Peru, I image, like imagine a llama or an alpaca. So there's that. Um, there's also anacondas, which is terrifying and um, pumas and macaws. So, so um, introducing my like issue topic, I guess, for Peru, I decided to touch on the subject of poverty in Peru. So the World Bank measures poverty in Peru using a consumption-based approach, which focuses on household consumption um, expenditures as a Proxy for living standards, the Global Consumption Pro Poverty <laughs> Report defines poverty as a situation in which individuals are not able to consume enough to meet their basic needs for food, shelter, and other essential goods and services. Um, the report uses a poverty line that is defined as the level of consumption ex expen expenditures, <laughs> I always mess up that word, required to purchase a basket of goods and services that meet minimum needs for food and non-food items. So the poverty line is adjusted for inflation and changes in prices over time. Um, okay. So for historical context, Peru has a long history of poverty and inequality rooted in colonialism and exacerbated um, by political instability and economic brutality. brutality. Indigenous populations who make up significant um, portions of the population have historically faced discrimination and marginalization, contributing to their um, disproportionate levels of poverty. So um, some things that I am going to mention in later slides is that the, um, the wealthy individuals of Peru have holds on, um, they have holds on extraction companies, like they, they, they have higher extraction rates in certain areas, which then causes the poor to, um, to kind of become poorer in terms of those who are extracting and gaining equity from these, um, these acts. So in the mid 20th century, Peru underwent a process of modernization and industrialization, which contributed to some of the economic growth and social progress, but also widened income disparities and deepened poverty in some areas. Um, and that also ties into the um, extraction rates. So since the 2000s, Peru has experienced some economic growth and poverty reduction. Um, driven in part by a boom in mining and other extractive industries. However, poverty and inequality remain persistent um, challenges in the country with significant regional disparities and ongoing struggles to address the root causes of poverty and prominent inclusive and sustainable development. So employment in labor market challenges, um, what are the major challenges facing workers in Peru and how do these challenges contribute to poverty? So poverty strikes in rural regions of Peru. In wealthier regions, like I had said before, there is an illegal presence of cold mining, which is said to be one of the leading activities in Peru's economy. Um, the lack of a diverse, diverse economy in Peru has led to the huge regional income inequalities, which then leads to um, economic instability. Low productivity is said to be another one of the issues facing the economy in Peru. The agricultural and mining sectors are overstaffed, which then causes lower pay and decreased productivity among the improperly staffed, improperly trained staff. Um, these challenges contribute to the poverty rates in Peru by keeping the little men down and never allowing them room for growth within these industries due to their excessively large numbers. And um, inequality within their economical system. So natural resources, extraction, and poverty. Um, impacts of natural resources, extraction, extraction on poverty in Peru. Um, one of the impacts includes um, poverty is increased in high 
increased in areas of high extraction. So um, World Bank discovered that areas with more extraction industries have higher poverty rates, which comparing when, when comparing to those who don't have as many of those companies. Benefits of benefits being unequally distributed is yet another impact of natural resource extraction on poverty. Although these companies whom are extracting these natural resources may be benefiting from this, the profit of these extractions is often not equally distributed, which causes a huge social inequality and poverty. So how can these impacts be mitigated? An increase in transparency. If these companies would take accountability for their actions and begin distributing revenues equitably and also informing the community communities that would be impacted of such actions um, so they're not just attacked when sudden increase in poverty, when there's a sudden increase in poverty rates. Um, also another way would be environmental protection and restoration um, is another method to mitigating these impacts, though through this method, we would ensure the longevity of the natural resources and would provide resources for the general wellness of the local communities. So gender and poverty. How gender impacts poverty. As in all other countries, women are more likely to have higher poverty rates than men. Um, so in Peru, women have a poverty rate of 22.9%, while men are sitting at a rate of 20.2%. Um, women do the caregiving and are unpaid for it. So due to the various roles that women take on in the household, their opportunities for finding paid work outside of the home are significantly decreased. Um, initiatives to place in place to address gender inequalities include legal framework and gender gender sensitive social protection. So gen legal framework would be the laws in Peru that are in place in order to protect the um, promote like gender equality and offer protection for women's rights. The gender sensitive social protection um, is a includes programs such as Juntos program, which offers financial aid to poor households, but only if the children are um, in the home or attending school and receive healthcare. So indigenous communities in poverty. The main challenges facing the indigenous communities would be land rights and discrimination. Land rights, so among the communities in Peru, they all um, commonly struggle with securing land rights, which at times leaves them displaced and discrimination as well. Um, as usual, discrimination is an issue all over the world and even in Peru, these indigenous people face discrimination. Um, how are they addressing the poverty? Indigenous community members are advocating for their rights through organizations such as um, Confederation of Indigenous um, Nationalities of the Peruvian Amazon, which is also um, COICA. And these same communities are also working on promoting sustainable resources, resource management projects, which involve um, agroforestry and biodiversity conservation. So intentional aid and poverty reduction. There has been various um, international aid programs that have contributed to education by helping increase enrollment rates, reduce dropout rates, and improve the quality of education. Um, similarly, aid for healthcare has improved um, access to essential health services and contributed to lower child morality, mortality rates. And finally, aid for infrastructure development has helped improve access to basic services like clean water, sanitation, and electricity, as well as expand transportation networks, um, which have faced facilitated economic growth and job creation. So in conclusion, poverty is a complex issue that often requires a multifaceted approach. There have been numerous changes that Peru has made which allowed for their progression of their, which allowed for the progression of their economic system. Um, there are still some existing challenges that need to be addressed such as inequality of income distribution, and uh, many communities, such as those with larger extraction companies, pre present soft present. I'm so sorry. Um, present higher rates of poverty, which 
brings the imbalance of income rates. There have been opportunities for this country to progress, which involve their commitment to social programs and their policies, their policies um, aim to reduce poverty rates. In order to address these issues, organizations that provide infrastructure, social services, um, increased access to education slash healthcare would need to would need further funding. Um, addressing issues within the government system would be greatly beneficial in ensuring that the resources would be allocated properly. Um, poverty is an issue that couldn't be fixed overnight, but with careful approaches and considerate advocates, anything is possible. So and these are my sites sorted and thank you for your time.